So a lot of what I'm going to talk about is stolen from a talk from, well not stolen, borrowed from a talk from Tom Hall, but he um, gave me permission. Uh, so I will plug his book. So there's a book here, um, it's on my book, it's Neil's book, it's Project Origami, it's Activities for Exploring Mathematics. Okay, so it's Mathematics and Origami. Um, the mirror map fold is actually in here. So if you want to check it out, it's in here. A lot of other stuff is in here too. Um, I'm going to pass it around afterwards because it has secrets that I'm going to tell you later and I don't want you to read ahead. <laughs> All right. So what? let's discuss what it means to be a rigid fold. We're thinking about this as we're, um, you know, we're doing sheet metal. We're folding up sheet metal. So in origami, the place that we start is we always start at the, let's start at one vertex. Okay. So let's say we have a vertex. So dashes and dots like that. I'm going to fold this by pi over 2 radians. I'm going to fold this by pi over 2. This is also pi over 2. This is a mountain fold. It's going to be a negative pi. And this is a pi. So it's kind of hard to visualize what this is. So let me, give, let me show you what it is. It's this right here. OK? All right. So. <coughs> Hopefully you can see this. This panel right down here, that I'm going to label with a one. And I go in this direction. All right, I'm going to go in that direction. All right, here's one. All right, we walk this way, we hit the back wall, and we're going vertical. So that's a turn of pi over two. Now we head to my right, your left and we hit another wall, and we do a turn of pi over 2. But look, we're on this back wall, so what's a turn of pi over 2? It's a turn this way. All right. Then we come down here, so now we're on the, we're on the third panel over here. We're going to come down to those triangle panels. All right. We hit another thing, we do a pi over 2. Okay. Then we do a negative pi, so what that corresponds to is going exactly the opposite direction. So if you notice here, I've got two flaps. I come along the top part, I hit the edge, and I turn all the way around and head back the way I came, just underneath. And then, I come to this fold down here, I hit the corner and turn back the way I was. So here is the folded version of what we have on the board. So I'm going to put it right here in front so you can look at it while I'm talking and then I'll pass it around. Alright. So, this partial circle that I drew on the board, I'm going to think of it as like an ant or a little bug. So we got a body, we got legs, we got a little bug, and now you know why I'm not an art, I'm a mathematician and not an artist. Okay, so if this bug goes around in a circle, then it goes some distance. What would happen if we had to stretch the paper to make this work. So if we took this part right here and it was stretched, well what would happen is that the bug would have to travel in the folded version a further <coughs> distance than, when, than in the unfolded version. Okay? So the idea here is that the distance that the bug travels is the same in, in the unfolded version and the folded version. If I had to squish things or stretch them or something like that, the distance wouldn't be the same. I guess it's kind of like how you measure the curvature of the universe. Okay? All right. 
So now let's get into some mathematics of this. How are we going to figure out if this is a rigid fold? If I have stretched the paper to make this fold. I didn't have to stretch the paper to make this fold. Okay, I'll tell you that now. But how could we, well we can't prove it. We're not going to prove it. But let's um, talk about how um, to at least justify it. So if you notice here, every, the, each one of these folds has two pieces of information. It has its angular position, and it has how much of a fold is going on here. So if I call this, I'm going to make this an order pair, 0 comma pi over 2. So my angle with the ho positive horizontal axis is 0, and my fold is a 90 degree fold. This one is pi over 2, pi over 2. It's a vertical, it's pointing vertical, and it's a 90 degree fold. All right, we got a pi, pi over 2 over here. We got a uh, 5 pi over 4, negative pi down here. We got a 3 pi over 2 pi here, and we're back to the beginning. So, We've got the um, angle on the paper, and we've got the fold angle. <coughs> All right, so that's what my notation means. I've got a um, a fold angle. Okay. Sometimes this is related to something called a dihedral angle, um, but I'm not going to go into too much of what this all means. Okay. All right, so now we need some linear, we need just a tiny bit of linear algebra. If you haven't had linear algebra, you can just trust what I'm saying. If you have had linear algebra, it might still be a little complex, you can just trust what I'm saying. Okay, so we want to represent all of the folds by matrices. Now, the reason for this, a little sneaky reason, all right, so if you've had linear algebra, you might remember that what's, it's, why is it called linear? Linear means it takes plane, that planes get mapped to planes. So if I use a linear transformation of matrix, what's going to happen is I'm going to transform planes into planes, which is kind of what we want here. We want planes to become, well, you know, this was on the, this back piece right here was on the bottom at first, but it's still pretty flat. So the idea here is that the matrices that we write down are going to uh, keep flat things flat. So idea is that matrices keep flat things flat. Okay, so it's pretty complicated to write everything down. So what we like to do in linear algebra is break it down into individual pieces. So um, if you have linear algebra, you know a matrix that looks like this. Is what type of matrix? You've had linear algebra. That's a rotation matrix. So what we need is we need a multi, a three-dimensional rotation matrix. Okay? All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make we're going to make a bunch of matrices. We're going to call them chi i for the, the uh, i fold. And what this means is this is going to be the matrix for folding. The I fold. So I'm going to write down the formula. Um, I'm going to call this the angle on the paper is going to be alpha. The fold angle is rho. I'm going to write down once, and then we're not going to use it again. Okay. So if you don't understand what I'm writing down, just close your eyes, wait two minutes, and it will be gone. Okay. So um, we're going to. 
we're going to need a cosine of alpha, a sine of alpha, a zero. A negative sine alpha, a cosine of alpha, a zero. A zero, zero, one. Then we're going to need a one, zero, 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 cosine rho, negative sine rho, sine rho, cosine rho, zero over here. And then we're going to need a cosine of alpha, a negative sine alpha, a zero. <coughs> So let me tell you what this does. What this first matrix does is it will take one of your angles and rotates it to the positive x-axis. So this rotates to positive x-axis. This one does your fold, and this one rotates back. back to the original position. It's kind of hard to figure out what the matrix would be for this diagonal angle. So the whole reason for this setup is we rotate it until it's on the positive x-axis, do our work there, and then put it back. Because it's positive x-axis is an easier place to work. You don't know matrices. You don't like thinking about it. Just kind of is a magic matrix that tells you how to fold. All right, so it tells you an individual fold. But this isn't enough. The problem here is, think about this. You know, you do your first fold and you're on the back wall. Now your second fold is you're over here. So you can't use the chi i directly because there's a problem here. You're not in your original position. Now you're vertical. And so you have to come up with a new matrix for being for a fold on a vertical side. That's awful. Because now all the work we just did was useless because now we have to, we have a new orientation, we're on a new wall, we have to deal with a new thing. But luckily we can save ourselves, okay? So we do, a, we do what would be called, what's called a conjugate, or called conjugation. Okay, so we're gonna come up with a sequence of matrices. So Li is gonna be the i fold in space. Okay, so what I mean by that is it's actually in the right position. So we don't want to actually have to calculate everything anew. We actually we can use our old work. So we're going to build these LIs piece by piece. L1 is going to be chi. <coughs> L2 is going to be L1 chi 2 L1 inverse. So let me explain the idea here. You're on the back wall. It's hard to figure out what this crease is, but you know what this crease is in the plane. So what the first matrix does, so I'll hold it this way so you can see, okay? The first matrix flips it like that, so your back wall is now in the plane. Your second one does your crease, and then flips it, and then the third one flips it back. So therefore, you got, you found the way to do your crease pattern in space. Okay, so I'll do that one more time. If you're on the back wall, uh, I want to do it this way, you're on the back wall, you flip it, the first matrix flips it down, the second matrix turns it this way, does the folding, and then the third one brings it back up. Okay. And we can keep doing this. So this L2 is the fold for the second fold. All right, L3, third fold. So undo the previous two, do your new fold, and then redo it, okay? Again, if you don't understand what's going on, just sort of listen to the idea and forget about the actual um, computations. All right, this can get passed around now, I don't need it anymore. So go ahead and pass it around. 